Hi and welcome back to another video of JPlay. I am Marcus and as you can see today it's all about Stefan Fels Luna. This game was on my list for quite some time and then I think two years ago or so this deluxified edition was available on Kickstarter. And yes, I got myself a copy for whatever reason. It sat on my shelf for quite some time until I, <laughs> for another reason, I figured out, hey, this game has a solo mode. And that's what I'm going to do or going to showcase to you today. I have never played the solo mode before, but I have basically a couple of normal two player play. Um, under my belt now so at least rules wise I should be okay at least I hope because there are some let's call it unclarity unclarities in respect to the solo rules but I will try to figure those out as much as I go especially there are some difference between the German and the English version of the rules they come both with this box here um, but yeah let's see about that and again Feel free to chime in if you think I'm playing something wrong. Let me know and I will try to correct that as much as possible. I will now open the box and yeah, we'll start setting up the game. Okay, and here we are. I think I already mentioned this. I'm using the deluxified version of the game and I really like the components of this game. I mean, these are these double layered boards here, for example. Everything looks nice. This is These are wooden pieces here, for example. Really, really adorable to look at. And I already did the setup for the AI player, who is the red player in this case. Um, the preparations are pretty much the same as in a normal, let's say, two, three, four player game. Or in this case, we are really simulating a two player case game, that is. Um, the AI player has the advantage, as you can see, they are starting on all of the islands and we are only taking one of those novices away and put them on the temple tile that he was assigned to as part of the setup. My one goes here and I'm now doing going through a normal, I think, preparation step. But again, I'm not interfered by another player. The same rules apply. So in this case, the AI player or the solo player, or no, the bot, I think it's the bot or so, um, starts the game with their shrine on the island with the master builder. And that's pretty much the only thing that the bot or the AI player will do throughout the game. They're not really taking a turn per se. They will do something uh, pretty much before I go in any given round and depending on some of my decisions, for example, they might build another shrine, for example. But again, I will explain everything as I go. I'm not sure if you are familiar with, uh, let's say, standard version of the game, so the normal multiplayer version, but I guess I will explain some of the core mechanics as I go. Again, there are no real deviations from the standard game here other than the bot player is doing things a little bit differently but in respect to my decisions everything is more or less the same as in a multiplayer game. So I'm now going through my and I keep forgetting how it's called preparation phase preliminary round it's called of course the preliminary round that's a completely different term in the German version of the rules but doesn't really matter too much. So I get to choose to place uh, some of my novices onto the island and I will also start the game with one one shrine already out. So I cannot go to an island where there is already another shrine. Apart from that, I think I'm free. No, I think um, I'm also um, limited by a two player rule, which says I cannot place my initial shrine on the island with those herbs. Apart from that, I'm really now free. So I have still five more islands to go. And this is typically the time where I start to suck at this game because it's a very thinky game. It's more like a puzzler than it is a random or there are really not a lot of random components, pretty much none other than maybe those temple tiles here that you, you shuffle them and for each active player you will put out one of those colors and this can change from game to game. And also the order of the islands might change from game to game apart from that. And yeah, of course, where those master builders and, and the goddess and, and whatever appears. But apart from that, it's really, really, really a puzzle game. And typically I suck at those games. So definitely expect me to lose badly in this game but again I want to show you how this game is played solo and I really do hope 
that you will make me aware of any rules mistake which I will most likely do. I guess I want to place my initial shrine onto the island with the I think kind of wildcard novice here. Yeah, I think let's do that. And then I'm going to place um, my novices two per aisle. Same rules apply. I cannot place my two guys over there because I built my shrine there. But apart from that here, I'm really no longer limited in respect to where I place my dudes. And this will be four times two. And most likely I want to place two of my are these novices? I think they are. Onto the island with the sailing boat here. And then I have three more to go. And I guess, ah, uh, do I want to be here or not? Maybe I do actually. Yeah, let's go in here. And I, I hear you scream uh, and I'm pretty sure they are. <laughs> Whatever strategy guides out there now you play this game well or whatnot. And you guys keep telling me, don't go there with your first novices. Ah, you're insane. You're nuts. Don't do that. But yeah, that's me playing here. And again, I will definitely go down. Um, we have still two more placements, I guess. Hmm. I don't want to go in here because, yeah. If I end up here, I will lose three points, uh, at least if my novices will remain there until the end of the round, because this, who is this guy called? How is this guy called? That's the apostate, exactly. He will make me lose points, so I don't want to be there. One, two, three, four, five. I guess I may want to be here on this island with this huge wave, hmm. because the Moon, what, how a moon priestess um, will move there during the next round. So I think that might be important too. And then for our last placement, I think I want to go to this island. Not the most powerful island in the world right now. Um, and especially not so much in a two player game. It comes in handy and sometimes it really does you good. But yeah, let's see about that. So that was my final placement. I will now get some resources or rather favor tokens from those islands where I'm not present at all. So not with the shrine and not with one of my novices, which would be here. So I will get those herbs and I will also get some money. And I think that's not a, a bad spot to be at. And I think now we are ready to go. As I mentioned, the AI player counts as the starting player in this scenario. And so we will do some stuff at the very start of the round. Again, it's not a normal full turn, but it's something that I have to do for them. And then, yeah, let's see what this is. Okay, now I have to make my very first decision for the solo player, or for the AI player that is. I have to choose one of the islands and will have to deactivate all of the novices of that AI player there. And depending on the amount of novices I'm deactivating there, we will move this um, disc here um, basically the appropriate amount of steps ahead. So let's say I'm deactivating two novices, then the red disc will move two in here. And this will give the AI player some victory points at the end of the game, depending on where they are here in this case. But this will also mean that this is kind of a tiebreaker. So whoever is first here will break the ties when it's coming down to, for example, majority around the moon princess up there. So definitely something very important, but the victory points is really what matters in this case. As I want to score at least some points this round, I'm really thinking of deactivating those two guys here because this will guarantee me the majority at the end of this round because this counts for the majority here for sure. Um, and I think that could be the better deal. I cannot choose to just go for one. I really have to deactivate them both. So let's do that. Deactivating means we are taking those guys, now they're active, and putting them next to the island, which now means, okay, those two um, novices are now deactivated and can, in theory, no longer be used this round. But there are a lot of ways how you can, whatever, move them around still or even reactivate them by usage of a healing herb, for example. As I said, we are moving the red disc two spaces ahead, and that's the member of the council. 
um, track in this case. So they are now in the lead here, which for ties definitely is important. Right now they are not scoring any victory points at the end of the game, but I'm relatively certain that this I think they have to kind of make it to the 10. A little bit up to me because there will be islands later on when there are only one novices um, on those islands. And then I get to choose to move just one. So this disc will move much slower. But again, as I have never played this game solo before, I have no clue what I'm doing here. So bear with me. We are not done yet. This was my first decision. Now things start to, um, let's say, automate to some extent. The next thing is that um, we are taking one novice from an island that matches one of those two um, temple tiles here, temple tokens here, and we'll place them directly into the temple. Uh, for me, it's much more difficult placing those guys into the temple. That's at least two actions I have to take. But in this case, the AI player will simply get it for free. They will always go for the highest ranking one. It has to be, I think, an approved or a released tile by the Guardian here. And a released tile means he needs to be in front of those two tiles. So in this case, the AI can only go for those two tiles. Later on in the game, I have the opportunity to pride myself to take something that's ahead of the Guardian here, for example. That's why I have this money token here, but I'm not quite sure if I'm going to do that or not. Let's see about that. But again, um, we will take basically the highest tile here, which is the temple tile, and we are taking one of the novices from that island, which is this one here, and placing this here on the temple accordingly. Of course, the AI will also score the respective amount of points, which according to the round, and we are playing this game over six rounds, maybe I should have mentioned that, and uh, this means the AI will score six nice points. And yes, I will use those nice little metal coins. They are somewhat difficult to read and I have no clue why they have painted those coins in this white coating. It doesn't really make sense. It looks really amateurish. Everything else about this game is so nice, but those extra uh, metal coins are somewhat strange. I keep using those because I still love um, to touch them and you can really tell them apart by this is a five this is a one really you see the um, crescending moon here for example full moon and stuff so this really works well so you it makes sense for you but it's really weird that they have i don't know coated those with a white color looks kind of odd but okay the ai already scored their first six points now next we are checking if we are owning a book of wisdom unfortunately we do so the ai also takes that away which is also an action i could do but again it takes me in action they will basically take their whole turn in one go and here's the first unclarity in the normal multiplayer game you would typically lay those guys down which signals um hey you in this round you cannot take this book away again which is definitely a good thing in this case i don't know if that's allowed i don't think it is because the rules do not specify that so i will stand this dude here upright which means in theory i should be able to take that book um right away from them and i think that's fair because again they are the first player they're doing everything with one go so i think i should be okay doing it this way and i believe that's more or less it. Normally we would now also check if they would push uh, some of the other novices away. In this case, that's not gonna happen because in order to push someone away, you need to be adjacent to them, but apparently right now no one is adjacent. So here was really lucky that the AI didn't go for this wave symbol because then yes, they would have pushed me out and then you're losing some points, you don't want that. And I guess that's really pretty much the end of the AI player's turn. So I will now take my turns and typically there is a cool passing mechanic in this game but something that you're not doing in the solo mode because now I keep playing until I decide it's time to pass and then we are ending the round. Like in the standard game, these are all the actions I can take. There is really no change whatsoever. When you first look at those, it really doesn't make sense. And the same is true when you read those things. I mean, it's clearly described what's going to happen, but you have no idea how is this affecting the game state in any way. Why should you do that? So you, this is really one of the games which has such a steep learning curve in respect to the strategy. And 
still I don't have really a lot of clue how to play this game effectively but I really like it a lot for whatever reason again normally I'm not a big fan of games that are too static I really enjoy some randomness in my games but for whatever reason this game it really has something normally um, timing is crucial in this game and you play with an actual human player um, it's really important when do you pass because again there is a very clever passing mechanic in this game you can pass and still come back in unless really someone takes the last passing token away from you then the round is over or when you would do uh, your movement action when would you go to the temple when would you claim a task really a lot of timing in this game which really makes this game so I think enjoyable for me you still have to play some yeah, brain games with your opponents really something I do enjoy a lot in this case I really it's more like a puzzle I can work my way through and that's where I'm not 100% sure if I will really like the solo mode or not but yeah let's see how it goes I guess placing a shrine onto an island where where you get those shrine tokens here could be crucial and each shrine will score you four points at the end of the game the same is true for the solo player here obviously so i guess we might want to do that and again here timing is not really that crucial in order to build you need to um, pretty much give away one of those tokens right now i don't have one but that's okay I should be able to deal with that and you can only ever build a shrine onto an island where the master builder is present and that was really an incident I rolled a die when I placed all those um, the master builder the moon priestess and the apostate and um, this is where they ended up obviously so I think in this case we really want to have this shrine token the way how this works is you have to deactivate two novices on that island and this pretty much allows you to grab the corresponding token of that tile. In a two-player game, in a normal two-player game, there would be two of those tokens on that island, but you cannot have duplicates of the same resource. So if you already have one, you cannot take another one. So there will always be enough of those resources, but resources or those tokens will always feel scarce. Let me assure you this. Okay. Now, in order to build, we would have to do the same thing, moving two of those dudes away and giving away those things you might ask okay how should I do that now those guys are deactivated this is where some of those cool little uh, herb tokens come into the play so we are now expanding the herb token and this as an action will allow me to reactivate basically two of my novices here. I think it's any amount of those novices at one island or no it's two I think it's one or two that's as far as I remember but let me check and yes exactly it's one to two I can now reactivate but I'm not allowed to do the same thing at the island with the herbs I think this makes sense those herbs I used will go back to the respective island so when I want those back I have to send in two of my novices there and from there yeah you guessed it right I have to reactivate those in order to get those back so these are gone for now then let's finish our plan so we want to build on the island with a master builder which means we have to move two of our meeples there or our novices we have to deactivate them we have to give that back it goes back to the island here accordingly and this allows us to build one of the shrines here this island already has a shrine from us so I can no longer build anything like this but the master builder will also move at the end of the round that's four spaces here also something that you always have to keep in mind how those meeples or how those big dudes here will move around those islands here he will move four spaces ahead whereas the moon priestess in two player game will move five spaces ahead accordingly as I want more novices I think think it's important to I don't know what they are doing they're most likely not a uh, mating but you have to basically deactivate two of your novices at one island and this will more or less generate a third novice here again I think the rules how do they call that I think it's recruit you have to do that in pairs obviously that's the official um, <laughs> wording at least again not sure what 
these guys are doing there and what they're wearing underneath. We, we don't ask these questions here. But this was basically easy. We placed those here. I will put them here into the water. This will also have. This is where those um, dual layer boards also come in handy. I think maybe I should do that here too. Really helps me um, to see who has been activated and who wasn't. But those guys have been dealt with too. And again, the first round will be typically relatively easy. And now I have to think about my next two actions. In theory, I could keep going. I could now generate new novices like crazy. But I believe I may want to claim one of those temple tiles here too. This is now only a lousy six. This is kind of a bummer. But if I'm not using or taking this temple tile at the, during this round, I will miss out on some points because this guardian will move ahead here. And as of the next round, this will be only five points and four points, three points, and you name it. So you want to do these things relatively early, similar to Castles of Burgundy, when you really want to complete those regions as soon as possible. Ah, but could I do something else? I mean, in theory, I could also try to gain this or that. The problem is I don't have, yeah, I don't have anyone any of my novices there. So maybe I really should have paid attention because this is also very important to see, okay, how, where do those temple tiles lie? I mean, they're all ordered here. So basically in a descending way, so they're not randomized in any way, only the colors is kind of randomized as part of setup. So you really can pay attention. And yeah, apparently I didn't. So do I desperately want that extra point or would I be okay doing the same thing maybe next round? The problem is the next two islands are also islands where I don't really have um, any novices here. So I'm not sure if this will help me. So I guess in this case, let's rather take one of those sailboats. Yeah, let's do that. So again, we have to activate those two novices and we are taking one of those sailboats. The sailboat, you guessed it right, will allow me to move my dudes around. So that could come in handy. And what am I going to do? I still have two more meeples left or two more novices left. And they are here with this tide token. The tide also allows me to move my novices around the boat, but the sailboat is typically the more powerful thing. It depends a little bit. Here you can really move an awful lot of novices um, pretty much from anywhere uh, to anywhere, but they will all be deactivated. Uh, with a sailboat here, that's something where you can keep those novices activated when you move them from an activated island and you have to move them from an island with active um, novices that is. So in this case, in theory, I could now use the sailboat to move those guys somewhere else simply to prepare for the next round because we already know how those will move. So for example, here, the moon priestess will move one, two, three, four, five spaces over here. So moving them away from here may not be the best idea. And ooh, okay, and the master builder will move one, two, three, four. So I could move the master build uh, my meeples here to prepare for the next round. Problem is we have the apostate here. So we would lose a hell of a lot of points, which I don't want. And just to be sure, one thing I almost forgot because when I keep mentioning that you lose in game, yes, you will start the game with five of those influence points here accordingly, which means the AI is already at 11 where I'm still at my starting five. But as you can lose points in this game, you should really start with some points. Otherwise, it wouldn't be any fun. Still, what am I going to do next? Am I going to move those folks around? But honestly, I don't think that this is a good idea. So I guess in this case, we want to activate those and this will give me the tight token. And I'm really thinking of using the tight token right away because again, I could now move um, novices around like crazy and I can move them pretty much from everywhere, either from 
deactivated position and also from activated position, which is really a very, very powerful. So even deactivated novices, I can move with. There's a normal move action, but this normal move action only allows me, I think, what is it called? I think it's the journey, the journey action, exactly. I can only move active um, novices and they have to go to another island but have to be deactivated in that process so that's also not great so i guess maybe we do want to do that actually so maybe hmm i think i actually am using this so i can now move any number of novices from anywhere on the board pretty much hmm. and i guess over here i don't need three novices and the same is true here here i also no longer need two novices because i have a shrine here which will make um gathering those resource tokens those favor tokens are uh, much more um effective which means i only need one of those so i think we won't definitely move one of those guys away and we want to move one of those guys away. The question now is where do we want to move them? And I think ah, yeah, it's really so tempting to bring them over here. But even in a deactivated state, I would still lose three points. So it's always um, basically the amount of your novices plus one. So I guess I cannot send them there. This would be really brutal. So I guess, yeah, okay, one will definitely go in here which means i will be able to use that novice as of the next round and again i can activate that novice because there is a shrine and i will still get the favor token here accordingly what am i going to do with the second one again i could move any amount of um, novices uh, on the board but you typically want them in pairs somewhere or maybe you want some majority or at some point in time you only need one of course and oh, I can, maybe I shouldn't have moved them from down there. Maybe I sh should leave them there. Might be lame, but I guess I'm doing that. So with the tide, I actually not really. Um, oh, I did. I think I moved one from the island with the um, book resource, book favorite token, and one from the island with the shrine token. No, I think that's okay. Let's send three guys in here for the next round i might get this tie token back and maybe i will also able to have the majority here but let's see about that but i guess that's pretty much the end of my round i'm not using my sailboat i'm not using this money back here so i will end the round normally the ai player would now build a shrine at the island where um the builder is a master builder is obviously they started here so we are skipping this for the very first round and then we are going into the end of round scoring which is kind of odd because again it's not being um, described in the rules that the soul or i player will score points according to the normal two player rules but i'm pretty sure that's <laughs> how it goes otherwise it would feel rather lame so we are checking the little um, rules overview here. We will start with the Moon Priestess. We will now check for majorities. And in this case, it's one versus zero, which means I will score five points here. And I believe in this case, um, the uh, AI player will not score any points because it's really considered to be a zero. So normally second place would go with two points in a two player game i think in a is it three or more players game i think so even the third place will score some points there but in this case the ai player shouldn't score any points at all awesome normally each player is losing points uh, on the island with the apostate but of course this doesn't count for the ai player i'm not present here so i'm okay you count really active and non-active novices there but again doesn't really count for the um, ai player and then we are counting the novices and books in the temple in this case each book in each novice scores the point as uh, a player one point so that's four points wow for the AI player so here's five and i will get one back so they're already at 15 points i will score a measly one point here 
really, really embarrassing. And that's really something that you also have to um, be aware of to really have a lot of those novices and maybe even books in the temple because they will really help you score you some points. But those were pretty much all the end of round points. So let's do some, let's say, cleanup. So we are moving the guardian one space ahead. This gets removed from the game, which also tells we are now in round five. All of those three temple tiles are now released by the guardian. In theory, we could go for those two, but then we have to bribe our way into or past that guardian. We have that token here, but let's see about that. And then we are moving all the figures. One, two, three, four, and five going over here. One, two, three, four over here. The apostate will move to the island with the next solo player meeples. And in this case, in clockwise order, in this case, that's unfortunately over here too. Something I should have seen. It's really clear as sunlight here. But yeah, I didn't. And then last but not least, we will pretty much reset all of our meeples back on their respective islands. And then we are moving into the next round. And again, we would start with the iPlayer accordingly. But I think I will stop here for today because I'm pretty sure I have messed up things up so I will give you some room to help me correct them as much as possible if I will now go into the second round in the very first video I, I think I might really miss out on this so I think ending it here may give you the opportunity to tell me hey what are you doing this was stupid don't do that that was wrong and I will also 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 highly encourage you to give me some playing advice on where to go or what to go for next I really don't have a clue in this solo mode here. I'm not even very talented when it comes down to the multiplayer game. But at least there I do have some idea on how to play that. But here I'm, I'm completely clueless. Anyway, I really hope you enjoyed my very first uh, episode of Stefan Fell's Luna today. Again, keep your comments coming. I really appreciate all of those huge shout out to all of my patrons out there really also appreciate your support a lot if you want to support my channel you will find a link to my page on patreon you can join me here on youtube like and subscribe everything helps and yeah hope to see you soon in one of my other videos and until then bye bye